and we are live everybody thank you so much for watching today i have a guest claude at rally with me my name is mary shores and i am coming to you live from my page on my for my fearless ambition series now today i want you to think about how often do you lead a change in your company and feel like you're pushing a boulder uphill. So I know that that happens to me. So for example, a lot of times um, I'll have big ideas and I'll want to I'll want to bring it to my office, but I can have that trouble getting buy in. And so, you know, a lot of times it's easy for me because I'm the president of the company. So people, you know, know and trust me. But for others, especially if you're in like middle management, you know, leading a change can sometimes be an uphill battle. Would you like a success strategy for communicating change? A mismatch between change and culture is often the root cause of where the resistance is coming from. So today, guest Claudette Rowley is going to teach us how to conduct a cultural 360 and align your change initiatives with your culture. So Claudette is the CEO of Cultural Brilliance, which is a cultural design and change management consulting firm. I told her before we started that um, she is like the change management magic queen. So I was so impressed. I was actually on a podcast with her, actually on her own show. And her and I, you know, sometimes you just meet someone and, and you feel aligned with them. And so I immediately scheduled a coffee chat with Claudette because I wanted to see if there was some further work or a project we could work on together. And she was so generous to uh, offer to do this episode of Fearless Ambition with us today. So Claudette, tell us about this idea of a cultural 360 and why it is so important. Right. Well, thanks, Mary. I'm really happy to be here and I've been looking forward to this conversation with you. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. And I, I like this. Would you say change management queen, magic queen? Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Change management, change management magic or change management queen. Yeah, I mean, fun. Thank I, you. Love, I love fluffy <laughs> titles. <so. laughs> Thank you. That was fun. Um, I will, I'll take that under consideration, right? <laughs> Business <great>. cards. <laughs> Business cards. There we go, right? I can see the right. crown already. Yes. Um, so three a cultural 360. So my work um, is around helping organizations really create what I call brilliant cultures. So cultures that really lift people up, cultures that are um, designed so that they can be as, as successful as possible. Um, that also meet business objectives, but where people like they like to go to work and they're they're really doing their best. You know, it really sort. This is a kind of culture that sources the brilliance and potential in the people and in the organization. And so I came up with this idea of a cultural 360 because I was finding that, to your point earlier, a lot of times leaders come up with great ideas um, and they come up with changes that would probably really really help the organizations, but they can't get a lot of buy-in, or they run into resistance. They either run into people resisting it, or maybe the entire, or most of the culture in a way resists it um, because there's a mismatch. So the Cultural 360 is a pretty simple communication process. It's a set of questions that leaders can ask key people in the organization to get a better understanding of how, how will this change be received? You know, will it be received? Is it aligned? What would the challenges be? So the leader goes into this with a lot more information and he or she can actually Maybe, maybe they would decide to not, not do the change at all, or they would amend how they were planning to do it or whatever. So it's also this really practical process of getting information. Yeah, you know, what I found, and especially just even this morning, I got, I did a phone call with uh, a friend of mine. He, his name is Lucas. He owns a local heating and air company, and they've contacted us to want to put together like a custom training for his office because this guy, even though he owns a heating and air company, he thinks on the other level. You know what I mean? And you yeah. can take you can take any business and 10 exit just based on your ideas. Uh -huh. And he thinks his mindset is very much like mine. And I was saying to him, you know, the thing is that that we we've 
we're in this space mm -hmm. where we're really wanting to, you know, especially young people, millennials, they're really wanting to come forward and make an impact in the world. So we've got that going for us. But the thing yeah. is, they, they want to work for companies that are much more humanitarian plus mm -hmm. versus humanitarian minus. And what yes. that means for us as leaders, it's like we have to take our ideas and, and make the people in our organizations understand the bigger picture of what is the return the ROI. You mm -hmm. know, I was listening to a Gary Vee video this morning and he was like, you know, he's not in it for the short term ROI. And that's mm -hmm. exactly how I feel. Like everything I do, it's it's geared towards this field. I started working in this field um, about 18 years ago. Oh my so, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, me too. Like, ugh. <laughs> that's great though for experience. It's great for experience, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For your cred and all that yes so um yeah 18 years ago and i actually started out coaching a lot of leaders and executives um, and i learned a lot about them and then i started working in organizations and noticed i was always working with culture you know that if we didn't talk about culture a lot of the change initiatives weren't going to work very well and this was back when people didn't talk about culture very much like you were kind of like don't really talk about culture it's too soft it's too fuzzy organizations are not going to have you come consult about culture? So we had to talk about productivity and we had to talk about things like that. Um, but now, as, as, as we know, right, culture's all over the place, so we can talk about it. <laughs> Harvard Business Review, like I think the latest issues on culture again, you know, so it, it's a fairly hot topic. Um, but I've gotten into that and then over time, I've developed my own, um, what I call a cultural brilliant system and different ways to really help leaders and organizations change their cultures in ways that will really help them be much better aligned. And the culture is part of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we've got some viewers and I yeah. just want to encourage everyone, if you can hear me okay, um, and if you can hear me okay, go ahead and hit the like button. Let us know that you can hear us both loud and clear. And if anyone wants a shout out, just uh, say hello in the comments. Let us know where you are watching from. And I will be watching for those and shout, giving some shout outs because okay. I know that uh, my very special friend, Cheryl Russell, who actually is recovering from surgery, Surgery, oh. And I have been so impressed with this lady because she is spending her downtime just digesting as much content as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. So just want to say I, I'm so impressed with that. Absolutely. But also, if you're thinking of any questions or you're th as you're listening to Claudette or you're listening to me and you think of a question, certainly um, throw it in the comments. So I want to say hello to a uh, Karen Kay, she says she is happy to be here. So that's awesome. All right, so that's great. And I know that on these Fearless Ambition Lives, what I really love to do is take viewers through a three-step process of how they can apply this in their life or their organization. Definitely. So what's the first step you would like to walk viewers through? Yeah, thank you. So really, what I love about the Cultural 360 is it's pretty simple to implement, right? We're not talking about a complicated process because no one, no one has time for that anymore, right? No um, one, no one, no one, right? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> a set of three questions, and the idea here is that you, as as a leader, and to your point, this could you could be the a middle manager of a team and use this, right? You could be anyone who has um, official or unofficial um, leadership status, you know, where you're trying to make a change. Uh, so you don't need to be the CEO of a company or something like that to use this process, right? It really is for anybody. Um, but the first step is is setting up a series of meetings with key people in your organization, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and asking them some questions. So I like to I like to keep them really simple. So this is the change we're thinking of making, right, in our organization. Mm -hmm. So one change I've seen organizations make, uh, the organizations I've been consulting in recently, is they've moved to um, an open space layout which sounds kind of it's sort of pragmatic and straightforward, but there's a lot of ramifications to that if, if you haven't been through that before, right? So, because a lot of times it doesn't work as well as it's intended. That's what I'm hearing from people. Mm -hmm. So, there's a change like that, so, you know, something like that. So really saying, you know, saying to the people you're speaking with individually, what do you think the benefits would be of an open space layout? What do you think some of the challenges would be? But actually get them talking about that. Really simple, but really an important step that is overlooked, I find, um, most of the time, really most of the time. Um, then the, the second question, set of questions is saying something around, it's like having them start to describe 
So if we go to an open space layout, what would success really look like? And having as a leader for me to hear what you think success would really look like is is really informative. Well, this would be happening and that would be happening. And we'd have this kind of furniture or these kinds of spaces, you know, things like that. Um, and then also asking, so if this didn't work, what would we see? How do we know this wasn't working? What would be the signs and clues, right? Well, everyone's sitting around with headphones on, which I've actually seen, <laughs> which, you know, open spaces around. Um, Let's collaborate. And then you see people with headphones on all, the, all day long. Yes. They can't focus, you know, things like that. Um, and then I think that one of the most important questions and the final question in this process is, as a leader, um, what am I not seeing that I should be seeing? In other words, what are my blind spots here? Right. What, what should you what would you like to tell me that you think I should know or you think I'm actually not seeing about this idea or change? Yeah, I, I love that. I actually, so just um, since the beginning of the year, I went to my staff and I was saying like, you know, I have an amazing staff here at my company. I've got a, a, a team of 25 and they're all split up in different departments and my company has been growing, going strong for 20 years. But I will say that we are very inspirational and motivated people. Yes. Well, the problem that you can run into when you have a group of overly motivated people mm -hmm. is that they say yes to everything. Exactly. And I actually um, taught them just recently, like, listen, when you've got an idea or you've got something that you want to push through, instead of telling me every reason why it's going to work, I want you to sit down and write me a list of everything, all the reasons why it's not going to work. And right. so like, if we're talking about this open, this open sourcing, um, you didn't say open source, open space. Open, open space. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've had something, especially that, you know, the young people come to me and they, they are very interested in this open space. But I think, well, for one thing, um, it can lead to too much dependence on a teamwork. Mm -hmm. So team, teamwork is great until you can't perform your job independently. Right. And, and then like you just said, the thing about the headphones. So I do have some people that wear headphones, but a lot of it's because they're filtering through my content. And so they're, they're always, you know, mm -hmm. they're listening to podcasts that I'm on and mm -hmm. you know, figuring out how to repurpose content. So I love the concept that you're putting forward about like, what are, what are the benefits, but mm -hmm. also what are the potential problems that are going to arise. Um, and I, as a leader myself, I have to tell you that um, that is definitely my leadership style, because if you go down the rabbit hole of every reason why you should do something, mm -hmm. then you will end up making mistakes along the way that yeah. could be costly. So also want to just say hello to uh, Roxanne. She just mm -hmm. jumped on with us. And also, so what is the second step? So we've gone through the first step, which is asking yourself a set of nice questions. What is the second step? Yeah, so you're, you know, with, with these questions, you can ask yourself these questions, but then also you want to sit down with key people in the organization and ask and ha have them ask you these questions, you know, or, or have, have you, you ask them the questions and get have them really give you honest feedback. You know, if we were to implement this change, what, how would it be successful? You know, and if you're talking to 10 or 15, I'm making those numbers up, whatever makes sense for you in your company. And you have, you know, a set of 10 questions with 10 people in different parts of the organization. Once you're done with that, you're going to have a lot of information as a leader. You know, are you hearing that pretty much everyone thinks this is a good idea? Are you hearing that People kind of don't. Are you hearing, or is it really mixed, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe if it's a bigger company, you have people in engineering who think it's great, but you have people in sales who think it's not. And that gives you important information in terms of implementing a change. You know, maybe you're learning a lot about yourself around um, when you ask the question, so what, do, what am I not seeing in this? You know, what do you think I should know that I'm not aware of as a leader? And you're asking um, your staff in these individual conversations about this, and they tell you, you know, any leader might learn a tremendous amount or it will be confirmed, right? So you, you ask yourself these questions, but then you want to, you pick, you know, 10 people, 15 people and have conversations with them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you were sent, talking about that was interesting was your staff is more of a yes staff because you're so inspired and motivated, right? It's positive. Yeah. And so many places I go into to consult, it's the opposite. They will tell you, Claudette, we can't do that for all these reasons. And so I'm actually teaching them the opposite. I'm teaching them to start thinking about all the reasons something could work. Well, I'm the one who signs the paycheck. So I think that. Yeah. 
a little bit to do with it. You know, yeah. it's such an interesting yeah. thing because in my organization, a lot of times we have ideas and, 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 you know, this is, it's like a trickle down thing, you know? Yeah. So I get an idea and I want it to be ready to go tomorrow. Like right, right. let's launch this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't have enough people, like my assistant Soraya, she, she's my like social media creative assistant. If I didn't have her going, wait a minute, Mary, like, let's think about this. Mm -hmm. And then she tells me the five reasons why it's not going to work. It deflates me a little bit, but it also gets me in planning mode where mm -hmm. I slow down and I start to write out the work instructions. So I am big, big, big on work instructions. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even do what I do as like my side hustle if I wasn't relying on those work instructions. And I think that there's some I think that there's some cultural brilliance in what you're saying that actually will help people develop their own skills and talents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the more that you get people involved in the idea, in the planning yeah. stages, in the way of saying yes, which mm -hmm. by the way, um, if there's a struggle between saying yes and saying no, my just my two cents on that is it has to be presented in a way of what's in it for them. Oh yeah. Because people are resistant to change mm -hmm. because they obviously you, you like when I do something like that, I would probably paint such an exciting vision of how it's going to look on the other end of the when the yeah. project is finished that people just naturally sort of fall in line. Mm -hmm. But if I don't present it that way, people are like, ugh you know, here we go, like, what is she going to do? And that's mm -hmm. not going to work. And then maybe mm -hmm. they don't have the courage to, to tell me that. So I love sure. what you're saying. And I also love that there's like different ends of these spectrums. Like, well, there's companies that like, okay, they're yes companies. And then there's companies where we want to, um, there's resistance. And I know that for me, the way to get buy-in is to always be talking about the end result. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. always be talking about the end result and always be showing what's in it for them and how this is going to expand our overall reach mm -hmm. or whatever it is that is the goal. Um, yeah. So lastly, I see that you've got a final step to share with us. What is that? So this is a, this final step is actually um, one for the leader alone, right? And the leader is really something I call being willing to listen to what you hear. Ooh. Right. Versus, yeah, leader, leaders do a lot of waiting and not listening, don't they? Well, or sometimes leaders will um, listen listen to what they wanted to hear, hope to hear, didn't want, you know, whatever. But really this idea of listen to what you hear. And I got this from a, a couple of years ago, I joined a, a, uh, a local community choir. Um, and this does have something to do with leadership. And so the, uh, the person conducting this and was the music director and everything right and he'd been doing it for 20 30 years very experienced and he actually said as we were all practicing right um some part of a song he said listen to what you're actually hearing as you sing you're like so listen to what you're hearing and that just hit me like a ton of bricks in that moment that this is that's a great message for all of us like listen to what you actually hear rather than mm -hmm. dismissing it hoping for something better or different right Really listen to the truth of what people are telling you, which isn't the truth of the capital T, but it's someone's own individual truth and perspective, right? Um, and I think too that when, to your point about being part of that, the the beauty and the um, the power in that third step is being honest with yourself as a leader. And it sounds like you, from what you're saying, do a great job of getting people inspired, but then you also follow through, right? And there are <laughs> leaders who get people inspired no, and don't follow through. No, that's, yeah, you must be human, right? You know, but leaders who get people inspired all the time, right? They rah rah, check out their, pom their you know, pom poms and truly, and then people after a while get really jaded and skeptical because the follow through is not there, right? So it's you just know, how, can yeah. I speak on that for a second? Sure. This is what this is what I notice is yes, I definitely am. And you know what, if anyone else is in a position of leadership, either because you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, you know, let me know in the comments, like what is your, if you're in a position of leadership and what you think your leadership style is, I would love to open up that conversation. I would say for myself that I get super big ideas. I get people super pumped. I mean, I am a motivational speaker. So yeah. 
it's easy for me to get people excited. However, I sell it in such a way that people get so wrapped up in that end result that they don't understand that it's a process. So like right. we might have a great idea, but it might take 18 months to unroll this you know, and, and like, cause you have to create the infrastructure that is going to support the change that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, um, and this is just, you know, me personally, even in my own personality, like I will leap, mm -hmm. I will, I will, I will just do it yeah. and then figure it all out as I'm working. But that might be okay for me. But mm -hmm. when it comes to like, if I, if I bring my staff through mm -hmm. that, they can find it frustrating because they're not inside my mind to know that everything's going to be okay. Right. And I also feel like people can be reluctant to ask questions because they don't want um, to make themselves look stupid. Yeah. You know, they, they think, well, if I don't, if I ask this question, she's going to think I wasn't listening and, and whatever. But the truth is um, I am totally in tune with the fact that I talk so fast mm -hmm. that um, miscommunications happen. Anyway, that's way off the topic, but uh, Cheryl says she's a leaper as well. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand that. Whereas I can tell Claudette is like methodical on her approach to how she jumps in with the whole change management. Someone asked me a few years ago to come to their organization and give a speech about change management. I didn't even know what it meant. <laughs> I, I mean, this was a few years ago. I wish yeah. I knew you then because I could have just referred them to you. But like, I mean, I Googled it and I was like, oh yeah, I know what this means, mm -hmm. but it's, um, you know, I think especially as the generations change, mm -hmm. we we have to change with them because it, if not, we become the dinosaurs of our industry. You know, I have just recently been watching. There is a there is a series on the History Channel, you guys, and I got this through um, Amazon Video. I got it. It's called History Vault, and mm -hmm. it's called The Men Who Built America. It is this fascinating documentary series talking about Rockefeller, talking about oh. Carnegie, talking mm -hmm. about J.P. Morgan. And I'm going to tell you something. When I watched these guys and what they were talking about, what I really saw, mm -hmm. I saw Tony Robbins. I saw Gary Vee. I mm -hmm. saw Darren Hardy. I saw Brian Tracy. I mm -hmm. saw... I saw their strategies yeah. being repeated. And guess what else? I saw Mary Shores. Mm. I saw myself mm -hmm. in them. And they were constantly creating change. You know, oh, yeah. the reasons that they became the richest men in mm -hmm. the world, the reason that they built these empires that was because of their willingness to move, adapt, and change. Gary Vee is constantly saying, you've got to be on the lookout for the next thing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that goes right to your point of change management. And how do we, how do we get a routine in this era of things changing every other minute? Yeah, how do you? And one of the it's the, the one of the things that's a little bit counterintuitive with the amount of speed, you know, and everything that's coming at us is this piece around, you know, having these conversations and actually listening. I mean, and what I find is that leaders, when leaders slow down to speed up, and I forget who said that originally, um, really, and it's, sometimes it's a hard sell. I have to really talk about it and like let's practice it and try it out. They find that really magical things, really interesting things happen. You know, because the I think I've seen part of that series you're talking about, and Rockefeller and, and Carnegie and all those people, they didn't, you know, they spent some time thinking about things. It looked like they were making a lot of changes all the time, but they talked to people, they got advice, they reflected. You know? They didn't have internet. I'm sorry? They didn't have internet. They didn't have, they didn't have texting. You know what their texting right. was? It was an eight-year-old boy who took their note, right. ran across town and delivered yeah. it to who they wanted to have it. Like so they had more time to think. They had more time to think. So what they if we, yeah. what if we did that for ourselves? That's actually great advice. I think that's going to be my one takeaway from today's episode is what would happen if I gave myself time to think? Like, wow, um, that's actually huge, guys. It, so it is huge. <laughs> Sounds simple, but it's huge. 
So um, I see Karen here is telling me that she runs a few businesses with remote staff. You know, that's kind of interesting, Claudette, is. is how do we apply this to remote staff? She puts her ideas forward and she allows them to bring her their ideas to the table. Good. Sometimes they need honing in and sometimes it enhances the original idea. I agree. Mm -hmm. Other people can add to your ideas. So thank you for saying that, Karen. And um, also it ends up being better than she originally imagined and it keeps her in the flow and makes her feel like a strong manifester. So I love that. Uh, yeah, she's. I do too. And there's something when, when Karen was just describing that it's, I think a lot of that often has to do with the culture the leader has created and the, you know and leader doesn't create the entire culture right it's everybody in the organization but there needs to be a culture that supports like yeah i have an idea bring me your ideas let's have this dialogue let's oh let's improve great let's implement now that's a cultural piece yeah yes definitely. every day i say you know okay so I'll, this is my last uh, thing i'm going to contribute and then i'm going to be quiet so I, I had this thing where people come to me all the time in my company and they say, I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, you know, I, I want to I want to learn this process and I don't want to say as I mean, I want to learn how to do the month end process like I'm ready to grow. And mm -hmm. the thing is, like, they don't realize how high maintenance that that can feel to me as the leader, mm -hmm. because the amount of time it would take for me to like slow down and show them how to do it. But the long term return on investment for me would mean that that's another person that could help me with that yeah. process. Right. And that's hugely yeah. valuable because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that people don't understand about me is that I'm working all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I got, I was so super pumped this morning when I was talking to my friend Lucas. I'm like, listen, because he was like, I got these 20 year olds that want to make $20 an hour. And, and like, you know, how do I let them know that they're just wearing their training wheels, right? <laughs> they're, they're not entitled to that amount in the, in the Midwest, you know, where in the town we live in, that's, that's not a, that's not a, an amount of money that a kid that's 19 or 20 years old would earn. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? I said, like, you, they got to understand at some point they, they've got to learn the lesson that um, they, they shouldn't be chihuahuas, you know, right. like nipping at our heels. What they need right. to do is if they want to do something, come to me with the plan of how you're going to mm -hmm. implement it. So mm -hmm. you want to learn that process? You come to me. You tell me, you know what, Mary, I'm willing to come in here on Saturdays when, when you mm -hmm. do that. Because like the way that I got to the level I'm at, which mm -hmm. is a seven figure business, is when everybody else was going to the cocktail party, I'm working. Right. When when everybody else is like, you know, doing whatever people do, I'm working mm -hmm. at 1030 at night. I'm sitting in my bed with my notebook and I'm working mm -hmm. and I'm I'm learning. I'm constantly investing in myself. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I why I resonate so much with Rockefeller, Carnegie, Morgan is because like it never shuts off. And I know that that's like way far off of here, but like that is part of creating change because, yes. you know, one of the things that I needed to do in my industry that that has started to get me a ton of attention was to say, you know, I own a debt collection company. I am a mm -hmm. thought leader. I am a spiritual leader. I am a best selling author of a, a personal development book, but I own a collection agency and how, and that's two ends of a spectrum, right? But it's my personal belief and the change that I am trying to make, not only in my own company, which is done 20 years ago, but in the industry, you know, how do you take this change management and focus it on an industry? Because I need to change the way debt collections are done in this country because having a debt is a burden and it is a burden that keeps people swirling in mm -hmm. the emotions of unworthiness and shame and mm -hmm. they will not be able to free themselves and live the life that they were meant to live if mm -hmm. they're worried that they owe a bill mm -hmm. absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> it is yes your mission <laughs> it's a mission your destiny. So, exactly. Yeah. Make your ideas your mission, guys. Make your idea your 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 mission and figure out what your gifts are and what you can bring. So all right, Claudette. Um, let's uh say goodbye. Can you tell everyone where to find you? I know we're gonna be posting a link whenever mm -hmm. we dig it up. And Claudette, if you find it first, please post it in the comments. Sure. And also, Claudette and I will be monitoring these comments later in the day. So if anyone has to, something they want to ask, please do so. And uh, we'll post the link of the podcast that, that Claudette and I 
that we taped together because it was really oh, fun. Right. So Claudette, yeah. how can we find you and your yeah. sources of amazing information? So the best, thank you. The best place to find me is through my website, which is culturalbrilliance.com. And all my contact info is on there and connections to my radio show, Cultural Brilliance, the DNA of Organizational Excellence can be found through there, all the podcasts. So that everything's in that clearinghouse. Great. And, you know, Claudette is, Claudette is bringing to us some like high level information and it's very intelligent information. So it's not fluffy. You know, sometimes we like to do fluffy, but this stuff is, you know, really the way business is ran. Okay. So I just encourage all of you guys to check that out. Thank you so much, Claudette, for being Thank here. You. Is there anything yeah. we have forgotten? I don't think so. I think we've covered it, you know? Yeah. But, and I like what you said. Yeah. Listening and giving us ourselves more time to think sounds simple, but it is so important. It's actually transformational. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be my takeaway for yeah. today that I'm going to give myself time to think. And I also just want to kind of put it out there and, um, Claudette, you didn't even know about this because we haven't spoken in a while, but I am getting ready to host a free five-day Power of the Podcasting Challenge. And what this challenge is going to be is I am going to take people through a five-day challenge of how to book themselves on a podcast. So I have become recently passionate. You know, so many people come to me and they say, Mary, how did you publish this book with Hay House? You know, how do they, they want to do essentially what I have done. So I have decided to open up my life in a much bigger way than I ever thought I would ever do. Mm -hmm. And I have created the, um, I've created a, aspiring authors online workshop. I have a partner that I've done that with. Her name is Cheryl Muir. She's completely brilliant. She is a PR expert and a writing mm -hmm. coach. Her and I are perfect partners together. She's actually based out of the UK where I'm mm -hmm. here in the, in the US. And because I live in Illinois, of course, she thinks that means Chicago which I think yeah. is always cute. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but the point is that this, this podcast challenge is free. If you want to start learning how to book yourself on a podcast, we will be putting up the link for that. You can join the five day challenge mm -hmm. and you know, the, podcasting is such a great way to build relationships. You know, one of the reasons why Claudette and I were able to do what we did today mm -hmm. was because we really clicked with yeah, each other absolutely. on the podcast. And, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of times I'm talking about personal development stuff, but her and I were talking about leadership. Mm -hmm. We were talking about my words that work. We were talking about very high level business stuff. Yeah. And we had that in common. And I said, I like you. You know, don't be afraid to say that. I like you. I, mm -hmm. I like you. I, I want you in my life more. And mm -hmm. I immediately asked her to do like a coffee chat with me. And which was that great. just. Yeah. Simply means that I go in my bathrobe, I literally go to the coffee shop, I get a cup of coffee, and I I choose a woman to connect with and I say, How can we how can we share ideas? What can we yeah. do? So anyway, Claudette actually has her first book. Um her so a lot of the people listening, Claudette, have taken my aspiring authors online course, which is how to oh. write a proposal okay. as well as um how to market your first book. Mm -hmm. And so we have that course available for sale, but Claudette actually just finished her proposal and she yeah. has it with yeah. an agent yeah. and it yeah. is currently being shopped out to multiple publishers. So I just want to say a huge congratulations. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. And is there anything you want to share about that proposal writing process? Um, gosh, it was, uh, it, it took a while. It was a great, you know, what was great about it is it really, yeah, it took a while. It clarified my ideas so much. I had to clarify my ideas so much. And so that part, it was incredibly valuable, mm -hmm. even from that perspective, you know, and how it moved my own work along. So yeah, absolutely. You know, I, that's one of the, I'm so glad you say that because that's one of the things that I have said over and over again about writing a proposal is it helps you organize your thoughts in a way that that really brings the content forward intelligently. So instead of just having all these millions of ideas, right. um, my, my new saying or my new mantra is if I can write an outline, I can write a proposal. And if mm -hmm. I can write a proposal, I can write a whole book. 
So, okay. Well, thanks yeah. a lot, everybody. And uh, congratulations, Claudette, for oh, all so of the yeah. new and exciting things in your world. And thanks for having me. It was fun. I'm so glad you had fun. I know yeah. it's a it's a little bit of a different medium when, when you don't know who's watching and who's going to watch, but it's yeah. all good. It's all good. That's right. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Mary. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.